In childhood, you probably learned that paralysis means the complete inability to move, to sense touch, or to control body sensations. As with most things we learn as children, the real meaning of paralysis is actually significantly more nuanced. Paralysis comes in many forms, and the extent to which a person is immobilized may change over time as physical therapy, changes in health, and sheer luck alter the way the body responds to physical damage. So what is paralysis? Paralysis is the inability, whether temporary or permanent, to move a part of the body. In almost all cases, paralysis is due to nerve damage, not to an injury that affected the region. For instance, an injury in the middle or lower regions of the spinal cord is likely to disrupt function below the injury, including the ability to move the feet or feel sensations, even though the actual structures are healthy as ever. So what happens to the body when it is paralyzed? Well, that depends on the cause of the paralysis, but generally at least one of the following factors is in play. The brain is unable to relay a signal to an area of the body due to injuries to the brain, or the brain is able to sense touch and other sensations in the body, but unable to effectively relay a response due to the injuries in the spinal cord, or the brain can neither send nor receive signals to an area of the body due to injuries in the spinal cord. The spinal cord is the brain's relay system. So when something in the spinal cord doesn't work or is injured, paralysis is often the result. These injuries can be the product of traumatic accidents or diseases such as strokes and polio. Most spinal cord injuries are incomplete, which means that some signals still travel up and down the cord. With an incomplete injury, you may retain some sensation and movement all the time, or the severity of the paralysis may change, sometimes on a highly unpredictable basis. A complete spinal cord injury, by contrast, completely compressed or severs the nerves in the spinal cord, making it impossible for the signal to travel. Rarely, injuries to the affected area cause paralysis. This is more common among people who have another medical condition, such as diabetes. For instance, diabetic nerve damage can cause nerves in some area of the body, particularly the feet, to cease functioning. You'll still be able to move, but you might have reduced or little sensation. This can result in more laborious movement, a loss or decrease in your ability to walk, and an increased risk in some other health issues, such as cardiovascular episodes. So how does someone become paralyzed? There are many different causes of paralysis, and each one may result in a different kind of paralysis, such as quadriplegia, paralysis of the arms and legs, paraplegia, being paralyzed from the waist down, monoplegia, paralysis in just one limb, or hemiplegia, being paralyzed on one side of the body. According to the Christopher Reeve Foundation, approximately 1.2 million Americans are living with paralysis resulting from spinal cord injuries. Car accidents, falls, sporting injuries, and acts of interpersonal violence are the cause of most spinal cord injuries. Other potential causes of paralysis may include, but are not limited to, traumatic brain injury, cerebral palsy, inherited disorders, bacterial viral infections, autoimmune disorders, multiple sclerosis, strokes, or spinal tumors. Each of these conditions can cause paralysis, though the chance and severity of the paralysis may vary greatly from one case to the next. There are many types of paralysis because there are innumerable ways the body can be injured. There are four main categories of paralysis, however, which have to do with portions of the body that are affected. Monoplegia is a paralysis in a single area of the body, most typically one limb. People with monoplegia typically retain control of the rest of their body, but cannot move or feel sensations in the affected limb. What causes monoplegia? Though cerebral palsy is the leading cause, a number of other injuries and ailments can lead to this form of paralysis, including strokes, tumors, nerve damage, nerve impingement, brain injuries, or motor neuron damage. Monoplegia is sometimes a temporary condition and is especially common in the aftermath of a stroke or brain injury. Hemiplegia affects an arm and a leg on the same side of the body. With hemiplegia, 
the degree of paralysis varies from person to person and may change over time. Hemiplegia often begins with a sensation of pins and needles, progresses to muscle weakness, and escalates to complete paralysis. However, many people with hemiplegia find that their degree of functioning varies from day to day, depending on their overall health, activity level, and other factors. Hemiplegia is sometimes temporary, and overall prognosis depends on treatment, including early interventions, such as physical and occupational therapy. As with monoplegia, the most common cause is cerebral palsy. However, other conditions, such as incomplete spinal cord injuries, brain injuries, and nervous system disorders can also result in hemiplegia. Paraplegia refers to the paralysis below the waist and usually affects both legs. The hips and other functions, such as sexuality and elimination, Though stereotypes of people being paralyzed below the waist hold that paraplegics cannot walk, move their legs, or feel anything below the waist, the reality of paraplegia varies from person to person and sometimes from day to day. Thus, paraplegia refers to substantial impairment in functioning and movement, not necessarily a permanent and total paralysis. Rarely, people with paraplegia spontaneously recover. This may be due to brain or spinal cord functions that are not yet understood, such as regeneration of neurons. More typically, paraplegics are able to regain some functioning with physical therapy, which works to retrain the brain and spinal cord to work around limitations while strengthening muscles and nerve connections. Spinal cord injuries are the most common cause of paraplegia. These injuries impede the brain's ability to send and receive signals below the site of the injury. Some causes may include spinal cord infections, spinal cord lesions, brain tumors, stroke, or others. Quadriplegia, which is often referred to as tetraplegia, is paralysis below the neck. All four limbs, as well as the torso, are typically affected. As with paraplegia, though, the degree of loss of function may vary from person to person. Likewise, some quadriplegics spontaneously regain some or all function, while others slowly retain, retrain their brain and bodies through dedicated physical therapy and exercises. Occasionally, quadriplegia is a temporary condition due to the brain injury or stroke, or a temporary compression of the spinal cord nerves. Some spinal cord injury survivors temporarily suffer from quadriplegia immediately after the injury, then experience less forms of paralysis as the swelling goes down, the nerves become less compressed, or surgery versus the damage. As with paraplegia, spinal cord injuries are the leading cause of quadriplegia. The most common causes of spinal cord injuries include automobile accidents, acts of violence, falls, and sporting injuries, especially injuries due to contact sports such as football. For additional information, please continue reading SpinalCord.com.